Kia ora, welcome back. Uh, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and today I'm here to show you how to create a curved world shader, very similar to the one used in Animal Crossing. Uh, to do this, we're going to use Shader Graph and convert an existing scene from the Asset Store to use our new shader. Uh, so before we get started, um, you will need to get the Polygon Adventure Pack from the Asset Store, um, and you'll need to use the Universal Render Pipeline uh, that gives us access to Shader Graph. So after you import the package, you'll need to upgrade Project Materials. Uh, just click that button there and that will get rid of any pink texture you might have cool um so the other thing i've actually gotten here apart from that asset is i've created a character controller um, if you don't have a character controller there is a link to a video that i've made how to create this character controller um, so just follow that and uh bef before you start this so let me just show you what it looks like when i hit play Cool. So we have this character that can walk around the world. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty simple. Um, yeah, so that is pretty good overview. The other thing I just want to show you is the materials. Um, this is, these are all the materials being used by the scene. So we're going to, and they're currently using the Universal Render Pipeline shader. So we need to retarget these materials to use our new shader. Um, and yeah, that's the approach that we're going to take. So yeah, let, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is um, create a PBR graph and let's just call this world shader. This is going to be our shader which bends the world and we need to assign the shader to these materials. But before we do that, I um, just want to note the uh, properties that these materials are currently using. The base map, the base color and the smoothness. These ones are not default. They basically have custom values set. So we need to pull these uh, values, make sure we pull these values across. It's just gonna save us some time rather than having to reassign, uh, reassign those properties on our new shader. So we can do that by double clicking our shader. If we create the base map, uh, the base color, so yeah, that's a texture 2D type, a color type, and then the th third one we need is just a vector one, which is the smoothness. Um, so the way we actually pull the values across is we need this reference value to match what is being used by the universal render pipeline shader. So we can actually go and have a look at what names they're using um, by going under packages, uh, universal render pipeline shader, shaders and there's a file here called lit so if we open that up we've got base color base map and smoothness and <clears throat> these these values here these parameter names we need to copy exactly uh, to our new shader for it to be pulled across so if we have base color uh, what's this oh sorry that's wrong uh, base base map base color oh, let's get rid of that and smoothness Cool, so if we just save that, uh, and if we go back to the scene, uh, go back to our materials folder. So yeah, this if we just, just drag the shader onto the material, that sets that shader for the material, and we can see the base map, the base color, and the smoothness uh, properties. They've all been brought across uh, correctly, which is great. It's not rendering correctly because the shader is not doing anything with them, so let's just fix that up now. Um, so with the base map, we need to sample this uh, just using a standard sample texture 2D node. Um, the UV coordinates need to be fed into that. Uh, and object space, not the position, sorry that's wrong, UV. Yep, UV coordinates, uh, texture. So then we just need to blend uh, the texture with our color. So if we just add a blend, blend node here, um, pipe the base color into the second property here and so there's one more thing we need to do, the alpha channel of this needs to be plugged in here um, so if we just split that, that lets us just get the alpha channel and <clears throat> the remaining can just be fed to the albedo node, albedo pin, sorry. Cool, so if we save this, let me just collapse these Go back to our scene. Uh, it looks it looks a little bit brighter. Um, the blend mode actually needs to be multiplier. I think that's basically what the default mode uses in the Universal Render Pipeline. 
Cool, so yeah, that looks exactly how we had it before. Um, so we're ready to start adding uh, curved logic basically into the shader. So the vertex position is what we need to modify. Um, I've got a little diagram here. Uh, so this diagram is, here is the camera position um, and this, imagine this is like a mesh and each one of these notches is like a vertex uh, position in that mesh. So for every vertex position, we basically need to shift it down by this amount. So um, as the vertex position gets further away from the camera, we need to shift it down more. Uh, so we basically do that by getting the vertex position subtracted from the camera position, gives us this length value here, uh, V minus P. And then if we feed that into this equation, uh, V minus P squared times C, um, the V minus P squared that gives us this like uh, curvature sort of thing here and the C, the multiply by C lets us control how sharp that curve is and so once we have this, this equation basically will give us the amount to shift the vertex down by so to do, then we just add the, this, this amount to the vertex position, the original vertex position and that will give us the final vertex position that will feed in uh, to our, our node here. So yeah, if we just quickly look back, the first two things we need is the vertex position and the camera position. So if we add those in here, um, the vertex position and world space is what we need. Let me just turn that blackboard off. Ooh, that's, that looks like a bug. Um, never mind. So yeah, we have the vertex position and the camera position. So we need to subtract the vertex position from the camera position. Cool. And the next step is feeding this into this equation here. Um, so we're actually only interested in the Z uh, coordinate here. Um, it's, it's not actually possible to see the other axes in this diagram, but um, so we just need to split this out and only get the Z coordinate and then we can feed this to a power node, which is, that's the squared term. Um, and then once we have that, so now basically this, this value here, that is equivalent to this V minus P squared. We've done all that bit so far. And now we need to multiply this by a curvature value, which let me just create another parameter here because we want to control this from script uh, so if we call this like curvature and let's just give it a nicer name because we'll reference this as well from uh, from script a bit later cool so feed that curvature value in oh the other thing I'll do is set some limits here just because this value is actually quite sensitive um, I know the limits already so yeah those are good values <clears throat> so now we've got this whole term, we just need to add, uh, shift the original vertex down by that amount that we've just calculated. And this is a vector one value, so to shift it down, we just need to create a vector three uh, with this is the y value. Then we need to add this to the position. So the object space uh, position plus this Y value here that will give us the final vertex position that we need to feed into this vertex position pin here. Cool, so that's basically it. So if we save that. And yeah, we can already see it's doing something pretty cool. Um, so this curvature value, this we can actually modify this and that's doing pretty much what we want. There are a few other things like <laughs> it looks, uh, it's not completely done yet. So first of all, let's uh, just assign the shader to all of our other materials. There's an easier way to do this. We just select all the materials and then type our shader name in. Cool. So yeah, that is, you'll notice that some of these objects are not actually moving correctly and it actually took me a while to figure this out it's because of these scale values and the rotation values uh, on the object so we need to what's happening 
let me try to explain it. What's happening is when we do the position to minus the camera, this is basically moving us to local space for the objects or well, camera relative space. Uh, and this Y value here, uh, this is basically in local space. So when we, um, when we move our vertex down, that's in the local space of the mesh. Uh, but what happens is when it comes through here, we feed the local space value in and that gets multiplied back out uh, into world space and when that happens it multiplies by the scale and the rotation values so this thing is actually needs to have the inverse of the rotation and scale values built into it so when it gets multiplied out it ends up being the value that we want so let me just create a, a node called the transformation matrix the inverse model will give us the inverse of what happens after this this pin here, um, and then we if we multiply the three by three the part of the matrix by this vector here, that will undo the rotation and scale values. So I think this is the easiest way. I haven't actually found a better way to do this. Um, if someone does know a better way, let me know. Um, I'd, I'd love to know about that. So. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. We're going to create this uh, split node and then feed that into a construction node and that lets us get just the 3x3 component which has got the scale and rotation values encoded into it. Um, so if we multiply this Y value um, by that matrix and feed that in here, save the asset, go back to the scene nice so now we can actually see uh oh the editor still has the original bounding boxes um i'm not going to go over how to fix that in this video just because i don't know how yet to be honest um but the trees and everything else are fixed nicely to the ground which is great it actually looks looks really good let me just zoom out just to prove the the world is curved <laughs> flat earth theory is banned here <laughs> cool so if I hit play I can actually show you this with the character running around Woohoo! nice it's really cool and uh, the other thing is we can actually change oh one more thing I haven't actually showed you is the curvature value that we added to our shader it's actually um every one of these materials can set a different value, which is a little bit annoying, um, especially if you have tons and tons of materials. So a really easy way to fix that is basically create this like curvature manager game object, add a script called, yeah, world curvature, they'll do. And then basically what the script is gonna do is loop over all our materials. Oh, why did that not load? And double click it again loop over all our materials and set the curvature to a single value. So we need to make a single value called curvature. Uh, I'm just going to give it a range, the same range that we used in our shader. If, if, cool, public, material, materials. And then if we do this in the uh, on validate function, that will only get run when uh, something has changed in the editor when we actually change this curvature value. If we did it in on tech, it would be pretty wasteful, so it's better to do it here. Uh, var mat in materials mat.set float. And so remember that uh, that name that we set in the shader graph, curvature. Uh, where is it? Here. This one here. This is the the same string that we need to use in our script. Curvature, curvature, and that should be it. So now <clears throat> in our world curvature, if we just assign all of those materials, let me just lock this, uh, sorry. Assign all of the materials to that array. Uh, that should do what we want. If we go back to the scene, nice it's all working yeah we can go up or we can go down um, there are a few more anomalies 
like this uh, big plane. Um, I think this is a this is basically an issue because it's not tessellated enough. There's only a vertex point here and one here, so it can't bend. It physically can't bend with the approach that we're taking. Um, yeah, but that is the whole video. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you liked this video and if if you learned something from it, uh, please share it around, uh, send it to your friends, and please like and subscribe so I can keep making more of these videos. Uh, I love doing this, so let me know um, anything that you're, you're working on that you want me to look into. I'm, I'm happy to help. Okay, uh, thank you. Kaikite.